Genesis 3 living, does not cease until it is Christ living our life. Being like God doesn't cease until Psalm 91 is happening live. He is the overshadowing one. We are under his wings. We are in the holiest place. Jesus put us there. If you remember, that's why charismatics gather in the name of Jesus to practice Jesus going on live as the Holy Spirit runs the meetings in diverse gifts through diverse ministries and diverse manners or manifestations of all that lot. And upon all, simultaneously, in worship, at times when it's not individual stuff, it's just God moving on block, himself directly connecting with his own bride. And why shouldn't he? He's the husband. That's the point of Hebrews 2. And Jesus singing to the Father among his brethren. The capacity to mimic Ecclesia constantly is astounding. But it is mimicry. It is the dragon's next manifestation, as described in Revelation 12. He's there, poised, poised, waiting to see what the man-child is going to do. What is this man-child going to be? As the woman, always, always, the church is both the woman and it's the man-child being born. And that's a continual roll-down process throughout history. It's a sign in heaven. We celebrate Passover continually in our soul. Once we have celebrated our main conversion in our spirit man, turning round from the devil to the Lord. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the raw, unfiltered, fresh word or bread from heaven. It's the manna which was collected daily and went bad quickly. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The huge battle of the ages is upon us. It was bad enough allowing some Jesus to happen somewhere on earth through the translation of the Bible into our languages. 500 years ago, the dragon fiercely burned many of those translators. Why is the dragon so fierce? Psalm 134, which is the priesthood speaking out the declaration of blessing over the whole earth. And Psalm 149, the glory reserved for the church. Of the very scriptures given in Genesis 3 to the seed of the woman, the serpent's head shall be crushed under your feet, but you, the serpent, will bruise his heel. You, the sons of God, Psalm 149, will exercise the judgments written against the enemy. This is your glory. The dragon wanted to murder Martin Luther for proclaiming afresh that the entrance into relationship with God is only by believing upon the finished work of Jesus Christ, by becoming a new person on the inside, by a radical exchange of spirit worked at the cross by Jesus, who knew no sin being made sin for us. This is our glorious introduction into a relationship with God at the brazen altar as we enter God's house. The killing of animals for covering skins in Genesis 3, Abel's offering of a lamb by faith, the mosaic instructions given to Moses on the mountain for the sacrifice of animals, all these looked forward to the one sacrifice, the one sinless one that came 2,000 years ago in our time story, but in the heavenlies is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. From the beginning, Satan has used the line 
itself to kill off those through whom defeat would come. How about that? Satan has used the line itself, Cain killed Abel, his brother. There was instant enmity between the fruit of Abraham and Sarah's action to use a maid of hers, Hagar, because God's own real child of promise just seemed so impossible. So right down to the present conflict in Israel with Gaza are the two sons of Abraham seeking supremacy in that contested space. Then, as if that wasn't enough contestation, like the squabblings of Jacob's wives, Rachel and Leah, which produced a large family of 12 sons, which became the tribes of Israel. Then Israel began splitting off, first tribe of Dan, then Judah splitting from Israel. Only some from Judah, Benjamin and Levi returned to the land out of Babylon, and Jesus was born through this people. But even most of those never received Jesus, even crucifying him, as the now converted former persecutor of the new Christian Jews writes of his own brethren with tears. That's St. Paul. But it has ever continued. The so-called conversion of Rome was largely political, and the resulting Catholicism has never ensured people are born again and baptised in the Spirit, rendering their claim of being a new covenant people, conducting new covenant worship only as valid as wherever there are individual souls entering Jesus' teachings of John 3 and John 4 with reality. But otherwise, they continue as a giant, mechanised, outer formalism in the earth, putting everybody off. Every subsequent move of God from Luther onwards is only as live as those living from the heart, receiving God's manna. There was huge contestation over adult baptism. It's about, so that would have been about 400 years ago, right? This is for much the same reason as cults that use initiations into Satan. Our human permissions are paramount because God has not permitted angelic helps and interactions save we give our permission. God has given the earth to the sons of men. Not even Jesus had any jurisdiction to heal anybody's body, the unique person, unless permission was given. So adult baptism is the sign that we believe and take on board our own spirit man death at the cross. And our rising out of the water signifies that we accept that we rose new creations within Christ himself. This gives permission, should we receive it, to be baptised in the Spirit upon our new spirit man. Often this gets out of sequence, and I was baptised in the Spirit before my baptism in water. But as crazy and modern people think initiations are, whether initiations into the devil through Freemasonry rituals and witchcraft rituals and tribal initiations, or whether the simple holy rituals that Christ has initiated, all are human permissions for supernatural help to man on earth. Joshua, remember, had an encounter with the commanding angel of the Lord of hosts to remind him he wasn't going up anywhere against giants unless miracles be worked on their behalf by these angelic armies. The formation of God's divine priesthood on earth, which is suffering such contestation, even from their own brethren, is initially the reopening of the places in God's tabernacle in the Spirit. This tabernacle has always existed in the heavenly places. It is the real thing. That's the real thing. Everything on earth is just a copy. It's just a copy, Moses' thing. It was just a copy. The temple in stone is just a copy. 
It's not the real thing. Now, all these aspects can be seen as open by the Lord and Peter in the Gospels and Acts. John the Baptist, too, in readiness with his water baptism. Outer courts, the lamb that was slain, the entrance into God's house, baptism in water, now a complete death inside Christ, instead of a Levitical washbowl called a labor. These were the two things you came to first as you entered into God's house in the outer courts, under the sunlight, still everything out in the open, still everything in the understanding of the natural man. All this is what you come to first. Spasmodically, through moves of God throughout the centuries, like Lollards in England, people have been baptised in the Spirit. But this full version of the Levitical pattern of some drops of oil upon priestly body parts, this was enacted on the day of Pentecost, then rolled out properly once more across the earth in the Pentecostal wave, 1900s until this present day, and the charismatic move through existing churches, 1960s until the present day. Jesus said, I am constrained, held back, until the time I can pour out living fire. He didn't want... The word living isn't there, but it's pour out fire from heaven. Meaning the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the pouring out on, that happened on in Acts 2. Here's the new covenant truth. Why some people even say you aren't a Christian until you're baptized in the Spirit. It's because Jesus was so specific in the upper room as to why he was returning to heaven and all the things the Holy Spirit was sent to do. You can read about that from John 13 through 17. Ecclesia, best described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to chapter 13, and Ephesians 4, can only properly function with a born again baptised in the Spirit people. Otherwise, as we see with all the high street historic churches, they're reduced to Jewish synagogues that sing a few hymns, pray a little, then listen to a rabbi-type person. You don't even need to be born again and baptised in the Spirit since God isn't in charge of the gathering. One human is. Now, I don't believe baptism in the Spirit is the only time a person becomes a Christian. Jerusalem entrance gate number one in Nehemiah is the sheep gate. We give our lives to Jesus at the cross, the lamb that was slain. We become disciples, we become sheep of his pasture we become born again john 3 says when we are born from above we receive god's create new creation spirit by faith and then we get baptized in water to give permission for god to work in our lives jerusalem gate number six is the fountain gate which is like the event of the holy spirit baptizing us in his power. This is like the mighty release of our spirit in waters from out of our inner being, usually resulting in the gift of tongues, praise and prayer in other languages without our mind getting in the way. It is a release for our long, bound spirit man. I should have said, because I meant that when I was writing, that if the John 3 thing is about being born again, this is the John 4 description that Jesus himself gives chatting away to that lady, um, the Samaritan woman, wasn't it, in John 4, by the well. 1 Corinthians 12 says nothing about a pastor in charge. The Greek word ecclesia is exact meaning, is exact meaning a general assembly. In new works of God, like the move in our school, we were all assembled, new saints gathering, right? We, I think we became a thing called a Christian union, but really it was, an, it was a Jesus move. It was, it was, there was no person, one person in charge. God was literally our leader. Later, as Psalm 84 indicates, God reveals man or leaders or elders in Zion. 
Ecclesia doesn't specify in the New Testament if it's comparing itself with the Greek usage of elders being taken out from among the rest of the people from the Greek city or whatever, or whether as a church it's more the Hebrew type image of the whole congregation. Doesn't doesn't actually specify that. But one thing a collective word ecclesia never means is a synagogue under one rabbi. Pastors, apostles, teachers, there's five of them in Ephesians 4.11, function in and out of the body. But no individual gifting runs the church. Do you get that? Read it again. Absolutely be sure of that. Because it does not say that. Or else the ecclesia meaning isn't upheld, is it? You can't use the word ecclesia if it's not ecclesia, can you? Jesus says of one person being a controller, call no man father. Call no man rabbi. So what do we do? Call him pastor. Devious, aren't we? Devious means the same really, doesn't it? Just changing the word. Don't be of Paul, of Peter, of Apollos. They are all ours, or as he wrote, they are all yours. Honestly, if you're not born again and baptised in the Spirit, you won't even conceive how this can work. But if you already know how God runs meetings, then you also know how people submit back to one person to be that head about halfway through the meeting, don't they? That Jesus told us never to yield to. There are many diverse gifts. There are many diverse ministries. There are many diverse manifestations of how they occur. So, we have the word ecclesia. We have the word diverse. We have the meme of Levite priests carrying the ark on poles in step with the others. We're not Levites. We have no poles. But we carry things now in the Holy Spirit. We have the word overseers. You only need the word overseer when it's the Holy Spirit moving people in such diverse ways. Overseer doesn't mean regional superintendent. It means people carrying meetings in the Holy Spirit. Like Moses overseeing the army up a hillside with hill, with hands raised. Now, in Satan's control system, people are all designated permanent roles. Like, if you oversee, you always oversee. In the Holy Spirit, we don't always do anything. As 1 Corinthians 12 has just told you, elders, ministries can be doing stuff or not. The whole congregation can be doing stuff individually or as a whole or not. We are training our senses in Psalm 123 operation, which we will need as a sensitivity for the whole of our Galatians 2.20 walk on earth. So after 500 years since Luther, we got as far as beginning to re-establish what Jerusalem in Acts called Ecclesia, or people of the way. Truly, as we see the shakings in the earth of the old pyramid orders, in and out of church, we have come to the tenth gate of Jerusalem. This is the gate of Mifkad. It's called assessment, judgment. Uh, it, it does mean judgment in the sense of the elders gathered to judge between the tribe members as they had grievances or things to sort out. So it does have that aspect. But it also means assessment because they were assessing the quality of the sacrificial animals as they're coming in, whether they had blemishes or not, according to the legal requirements, which was no blemishes. So Mifkad's a much more general wor word than, um, you know, a word like eternal judgment. It's, it's 
it's assessing it's it's bringing in instructions and um, things to guide and keep the framework keep things going we have to learn now to be managed under co-elderships we always had juries of 12 didn't we anyway but this only works if we are living and walking in the light of God's glory. And this has been opened for us by Jesus in the new covenant in his blood. We can be born again and baptized in the spirit and learn this new Galatians 2.20 life off, completely away from the platform of this Genesis 3 proud self-strutting, independent believing, self-running soul thinking person that we all thought we were that's why ecclesia is indeed the pillar and ground of truth of the ephesians 110 new administration really that's the foretaste we were seeing when a collective eldership stepped forward and spoke out against the guidelines of who on capitol hill in may may i think it was 2020 or perhaps earlier i don't know was it march april and spoke the results of the 2003 to 2005 NIH funded research. These were all medical doctors with no personal profit to gain, with no big pharma financially induced agenda. That was for us a foretaste of us as a whole world, actually, refusing this collective, honest, eldership simply stating true science but we chose to live in the spirit of flesh and received these all controlled media all controlled social media like facebook all these in, in induced bribed organizations who were submitting to the death of millions of people as was the agenda of those who organized even the research into sars covid for this purpose from the very beginning set in motion by bertrand russell in the club of rome and then enacted and worked on by controllers since that time as to how it was to be achieved Somewhere that got set, sent back, didn't it? So these people, and I actually meant to say also that, as if it, if that wasn't clear enough, in two thousand and three, there was a series that so many thousands saw. I never saw it, but uh, it was called Dead Zone, and even in Dead Zone. The, the antidote of HCQ, which is, wasn't quite as good as um, ivermectin, but it was already, ivermectin was only, only came out in 90, uh, 2017, but HCQ was there, set in stone in that series. You can go back and watch it. This whole scenario was mapped out because, because it was the plan. It was the planned scenario. So these medical, medical doctors, they represented within the medical field only, of course, the type of true administration needed in the earth, which all these bodies that I list further down here do not represent, controlled as they are by Satan himself to bring forth his reign. WHO, WEF. United Nations, Pentagon, NATO, Masonic-run nations, communist-run nations, everything with a pyramid shape, all-seeing eye, and supported by the trade and traffic of innocent humans and the slaughter of babies and adrenochrome trade to support non-human entities controlling the earth. They need human energy, and we have bought into supplying them so that they continue their reign on earth through humans.